How many times have you gone to make a build for your agent only to give up and go back to something familiar or from your favorite YouTuber? Biz here, and today we're gonna start a new series that will hopefully help any player create their best setup. Whether you're new to the division or a seasoned vet, this series will have takeaways for you. So let's lean in. As always, thanks for tuning in today and over the past few videos. You guys watching and engaging in the content I put out really means a lot. Let's get a conversation going down in the comments below. What is one weapon or gear talent that you have no idea how to make work in this game? Comment below, let's figure it out together. While you chew on that, let's jump on in. It's pretty safe to say that a good chunk of the division is all about the build you're running on your agent. This is apparent in a lot of ways. Looking at you hashtag best builds, all 300 of you. One of which being when the developers commented on a state of the game saying the division at its core is a math game. Not going into this game with that in mind can leave a player frustrated when they can't land a one shot kill or worse off, haven't mitigated enough damage to keep getting wiped. You can tell a good chunk of the player base struggles in this area if you simply inspect builds of players in the social space. I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone wearing a six-piece gear set build. This isn't the first game, guys. You only need four. With that said, I wanted to make this series to share with you my method for making builds. In this video, we'll cover that foundation and questions I ask myself when setting up a build. We'll also make a tank build using this method. As a disclaimer, this is my way of making sense of the math, and in no way is it the only way. If something in this video resonates with you, or you have a good method you want to share, leave it in the comments below. So when setting out to create a build, we start with a very simple and fundamental question. What is this build going to do? In asking this question, you should really be specific and think critically. Something like, mm, I want to kill enemies, isn't going to do the job. How do you want to eliminate them should be the question you're answering there. The follow-up question to once you find that thing you want the build to do is what will support doing that thing effectively. Answering this follow-up question with as many things as you can think of will be crucial. So take some time and brainstorm this. Think down the line of any brand or gear set bonuses, gear or weapon talents, exotics, even your core and secondary attributes and skills. Your build will only be as successful as you can think it. After answering those questions for that thing you want the build to do and do well, sometimes doing one thing or min-maxing is not enough. You may want to choose a second thing you want the build to do. If you do this, simply follow the process above. At the end of that, choose from your pool of options, starting with things that will help both things get done well. That's the sweet spot, really. As a word of caution, I'd probably steer away from doing more than two things on a build. Any more than two focuses, and you'll run into a lack of efficiency trying to plug too many things into your setup. So as I said, I wanted to show this method in action, and we're going to start by making a tank build. So with the tank build, the first thing I want to be able to do is obviously take a lot of damage. I want survival to be front of mind here. When we dive into what can support that, there are a lot of ways we can go. In attributes, it's a no-brainer we need blue cores and attributes. I'd also lean heavy into armor regen. Gear-wise, we have the obvious choice in Foundry Bulwark. If you've gotten the pieces from the Iron Horse Raid, this is a great gear set to go with, especially if you go Shield Tank build. We also have Gila Guard, Golan Gear, and Bellstone Armory for brand sets. For exotics, Tardigrade is great for team support. Or, for armor regen, we can go Ridgeway's Pride and have an interesting way to leech armor from our enemies. On the weapon talent side of things, should this be a Shield build, a Liberty would be great. Taking advantage of being close range, could mean close and personal becomes viable here. Some people would suggest preservation here. I don't buy it, as there's already a lot of incoming healing. Gear talent, there are some neat options. Vanguard, Protector, Unbreakable, even Adrenaline Rush, just to name a few. So now that we've thought up a lot for the first thing we want this build to do, I'm gonna follow up with the second thing. That thing to challenge myself will be adding outgoing damage to this build. Now this will be a bit of a hard sell, as being a tank, you can't th really throw away blue cores. Those keep you alive. We'll have to use what we already have that can support. One thing we have is the goal in one piece bonus, which is status effects. Depending on which status effects we put on these enemies will dictate a weapon talent, as we'll get added damage from that. So odds are we're looking at Sadist, Ignited, 
or even eyeless. Gear talents, when looking at damage and tanking, could code two different ways. We could use the incoming bleed and armor regen of Ridge Race Pride with Vigilance for added damage. The other way, and the way I plan on building this, will be with Adrenaline Rush and Intimidate. As I have a good Golan Gear named Hunter Killer with Perfect Intimidate, that bonus armor and damage combo will let me mess things up. Finally, we'll look at specializations here, and I think the clear choice for the two things we want to do will be the Firewall. Here we get the Striker Shield, which will do added damage and be a tier 6 shield. It really is the best of both worlds. What we ended up with was a pretty sweet spot for both tanking through armor regen and outgoing damage. We see a firewall specialization set up with one red core and the rest blue, leaving us at 1.8 million armor. We also see a mix of crit chance, damage, and armor regen for the attributes. Overall, the brands we went with were three pieces of golden gear, giving us bonuses to status effects, armor regen, and total armor. Then we see a one-piece Gila Guard for a bonus to total armor, a Bellstone Holster for extra armor regen, and a piece of Walker Harris for extra weapon damage. Personally, I would have liked to make this a specific weapon bonus, maybe for a Fenris or Sokolov or Badger Tough, but I won't scoff at 5% multiplicative weapon damage for all weapons. Sweet deal. For the chest and backpack talents, we went with the perfect versions of Adrenaline Rush and Intimidate. The first, Adrenaline Rush, will give us 23% of our armor as bonus armor for 5 seconds per enemy within 10 meters. This can stack up to 3 times and has a 5 second cooldown. So if you max the stacks, you can get almost 1.2 million armor as bonus armor. That crisp blue armor. Mwah. Almost as crisp as a cool can of LD. Which is short for Liquid Death now. On a summer day. Mm. Refreshing. This bonus armor will also allow the Perfect Intimidate to work, which will net 40% amplified damage to targets within 10 meters. This is a very good synergy for sure, and will be the sweet spot between both things we wanted this build to do. Nice. Moving into weapons, we went with a FAMAS and an MP5ST. Both of these guns have Sadist on them. I feel like Close and Personal could have been good here too, but in capitalizing on the status effect bonus we have, I felt it prudent to get weapon damage from things we put a status effect on. Finally, in skills, we see the reason we went with Firewall, as we'll be using the Striker Shield. This is a favorite of mine, mostly for the Cone of Death in the front of it. But for this build, as we need to find efficient ways to find damage, this is a great way to do that. We also land on a Stinger Hive. Again, if you want to neglect the status effect and go close and personal, that could work too, and here you could do a Revive Hive, or even a Jammer Pulse if you're in PvP. This Hive will put the bleed on the enemies needed to use Sadist, so again, a really nice synergy. Looking at the stats, we do see we managed to keep the crit damage and crit chance somewhat respectable. More importantly, we're getting back 55,000 armor a second with this build. I feel like this is a win, as this build is fun to mess around with. So with that, we have done it. The method works. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if this helps you in any way. Either way, that will do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did and you haven't already, please support the channel by simply hitting that subscribe button so you never miss a video. We'll catch you guys next time. Biz out.